Hello, Stitchers. Welcome to Stitch Please, the official podcast of Black Women Stitch, the sewing group where Black Lives Matter. I'm your host, Lisa Woolfork. I'm a fourth generation sewing enthusiast with more than 20 years of sewing experience. I am looking forward to today's conversation. So sit back, relax, and get ready to get your stitch together. everybody and welcome to the stitch please podcast we are the official podcast of black women stitch the sewing group where black lives matter and i am so happy to be here and i say this every episode i have never started an episode and say i guess i'm all right to be here but today i'm super happy because we are going to demystify bra making for you um i've looked through and asked questions um about what people were thinking about sewing bras and so we have a really special episode today with two of my very very good friends from Black Women Stitch. Uh, we are joined by Dewan Coburn, who is the Black Women Stitch bra sewing expert, and Naomi P. Johnson, the heart and soul of DC Frock Tales, who is a novice bra sewist. Um, she just sewed her first bra, and I represent the kind of middle position. I've made about four four or five bras, a couple bralettes, and I thought it would be a nice opportunity for us to sit down and have a conversation about sewing bras so that you all could listen to us and maybe have some of your own fears addressed. So welcome to the program, Dewan and Naomi. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. All right. So the first step, what tell us a bit about your bra sewing experience? And I want to start with Naomi because you have the least and you had a pretty satisfying experience sewing your bra most recently. So can you tell us about what that was like for you? Um, sure. I had never made a bra before until about two and a half weeks ago. I um I decided to participate in the Black Women's Stitch Bra Sew Along because I had purchased uh, bra patterns back in August for um, the Instagram, you know, Sew Along Activity Braugus. And I thought, oh, I'll give it a try. So I purchased the bra pattern. I looked at purchasing all the materials and got completely overwhelmed. And never did anything with it. In fact, I forgot that I had purchased the pattern. So when we got started with the sew along, I went to purchase the pattern and got up to the point of checkout. And it was like, oh, no, you already had that, girl. You don't need to buy it. And so I was really happy to not have to spend money on the pattern in that moment because it was at kind of the early stages of um, stay at home orders Uh, So I was happy to not have to spend money on the pattern. Uh, Dewan walked us through all of the parts and pieces that we needed and referred us to some places where we could get kits. So I picked one out. It came. I had everything I needed. um, And I started to fiddle around with making sure that I was going to have a good fit because each bra pattern maker has a different a different sizing scheme. So I figured out what seemed like my most reasonable fit. I um, pinned the pattern piece together. It looked like it was going to be good. So I cut everything out and went to it. Um, With skills that I already have from years and years of sewing and years of teaching sewing, I was able to construct a bra. It fits you can't tell me shit. Exactly. Um, you, like, you literally cannot tell me shit because I made a bra. So there have been several days of social isolation where I'm just sitting in my house with a full-on underwear underwire bra because <clears throat> I made it myself. And, like, this is absolutely no bra time um, except I made it. So, bitch, I'm wearing it. Um Making this bra was my most satisfying sew ever, hands down. Like, every seam was less than eight inches. It came together so quickly. I I did it 
basically in an afternoon, like in three or four hours. And I think I paused at one point because I was a little bit confused about a step. And so I did a lot of research on the internet. Um, I used YouTube University aggressively to figure out what I was confused about. And then I had a bra and I was, you know, putting my titties in my stories because I made it. They looked amazing. So <laughs> <laughs> good. Dewan, um, thank you so much, Naomi. And I, I think one of the things I wanted to talk about as we move through the episode are, I guess we could even divide it into like three categories. If one, of, I think one of the things I hear a lot from people, at least when I ask folks about why they did not sew a bra, was a sense of being overwhelmed. And people are overwhelmed by the stuff that's required to make a bra, the idea that a bra is a structural garment with wires and hooks, and the sizing issue. So I'm hoping we can get to all three of those today. So, Dewan, can you tell me about... Okay, Dewan, can you tell me about your um, approach to, like, what, what sewing your most recent bra was like? Because you were sewing, like, right along with us. Um, and what we're talking about, we just had a casual sew along, y'all. You know, um, uh, we're recording this, and we're all still in the midst of social isolation required by um, different COVID restrictions. Um, but one of the things that has brought people together is using Zoom and other means to communicate. So we just get on a Zoom on Thursday and we just kiki and so or kiki and not so um, and part of this one has been part of the bra sewing has been a lot of kikiing, a lot of cocktails a lot of um, <laughs> and a lot of left and a, a lot of drinking and a lot of sewing and Dewan has done some really great instruction for us so what brought you to bra sewing Dewan? like what like what made you decide to to start and when did you start making bras because i know you took a class a I while took back a ago. class so there's this wonderful woman her name is t acty jones and she was a part of the american sewing guild about 10 years ago she offered a class um and the, I can't think of the name of the person who did the class, but I was intrigued just the thought of being able to make my own bra. The details in the sewing got me, basically, and the idea that I could customize and make matching panties and just, I could go all out, you know, with my own creativity. So I had a class... It was a one day. It started on, a, I shouldn't say one day, it was two days. It was a Friday evening where she did an introduction to bra making, and she talked about all of the materials, and um, we took measurements. And then on the following Saturday, we came in, and we stayed all day, and at the end of the day, we had a bra. And I was hooked at that point. That was 10 years ago. So nowadays, 10 years later, we have um, so many more patterns and things that we can use versus 10 years ago that I, I'm, I love it. And I think this, this idea of one of the things I love about sewing in general is the transformative properties of sewing, that you can start with like a pile of material and end up with a duvet cover or, or a garment or a pair of underwear or something like that. And I think that the bra is no exception. It's almost like magic. And it, to me, it just feels like, wait a minute, this is just some mesh and some really thin wires and... And like, what? This is, yeah. And so I think one of the things that I find so surprising and delightful about bra making is that we end up, we start with these, like what looks like little tiny scraps and it turns out to be something really fantastic. Um, and that's something that I find really exciting about the process. So how about, do you, could you estimate, Duane, about how many bras you've made in the last 10 years? Could you guesstimate? Um, I'm going to guess on maybe 25. 
So for me, I started out, I made the first bra, which of course I loved it. And then um, it was, I loved the process of making the bra, but the bra pattern itself was, it was 10 years ago, so it was a little uh, matronly. And so okay. I wanted mm-hmm. to look into other patterns and there wasn't that much out. And that's what I was trying to uh, say before. There weren't that many patterns available, but now so many other patterns have come about that I made my first bra years ago and I kind of got a little discouraged because I was trying to figure out all the, all the things that go along with the bra. And so in the past, I would say five years, I started back sewing them again, and I've made about 25 of them since then. So at that point, I was hooked. It really is pretty fantastic. And I want to kind of talk specifically about that way that folks tend to think that you need a certain type of either skill or a certain type of machine in order to sew a bra. Um, they're like, well, I, maybe I need to get a serger or I need an overlocker or I need, I don't know, a blind hammer. I just made that up. But um, it's like, you, you feel like you need like special equipment, right? Um, and it turns out that you really only need like a couple of things. Um, Naomi, can you yeah. tell us about that? What does, I think maybe what we talked about earlier was that um, a brave beginner can sew a bra. What does a brave beginner need? What does anyone need to sew a bra in terms of sewing skills? Um, the only thing that I feel like you need to sew a bra is, you know, a willingness to try. You need a sewing machine and a sharp pair of scissors or a rotary cutter and a rotary mat. And if you have those things and you've purchased a kit, you have everything that you need to sew a bra. As long as you can sew an mm-hmm. accurate seam, you will be fine to make a bra. You're like, you can absolutely. And the do. sewing machine doesn't have to be anything special. All it needs to be able to do is a straight stitch no. and a zigzag stitch. And a zigzag stitch. It doesn't even need a. I, I know a lot of people like to use the three step mm-hmm. zigzag it's not stitch. Um, but if you have just a basic a, a basic zigzag stitch, then you can make a bra. And you will be delighted and tickled with yourself, and you will show everybody. You will be flashing everybody up your shirt um, because you made your bra. <laughs> that was one of my big, like, my big goals. I was like, man, if I ever learn to make a bra, I'm going to start wearing them on the outside of my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, it, this is basically where I am now. Like, Madonna circa, like, late 80s, <laughs> early 90s. Like... <laughs> Here is my bra. It is amazing. <laughs> and I, too, am amazing because I made it, bitch. <laughs> I made it. I there's I there's made something it. about sewing them that just boosts your confidence. So it's, it's a great... It's just great. It, it does. And I think that's a beautiful way to put mm-hmm. it to It boosts your confidence. Well, let's get into the bra pattern itself. One of the things that I found so both uh, reassuring as well as a bit intimidating was is that a bra is not that many pieces. It's about mm-hmm. six pieces. So y'all listen and correct me mm-hmm. if I'm wrong. For the Air, the Emerald, the Black Beauty bra, this is the bra, y'all. I, hope, I know you've been listening um, to some of the promos and hopefully seen them on Instagram. Um, we've got a great collaboration with four excellent companies, um, and we'll talk about them in a second when we get into the materials for the bra. But for the pattern itself, it's pretty much just six pieces. You have the upper, you have a cup that's divided into two pieces. You have an upper cup and a lower cup. You have the center cradle. You have the, um, the band, the band is made up of three pieces. Is that right? One, two for the cup. And the band is one, two, three. And you have a power bar. You have two pieces for the cup. You have the power bar for the side of the cup. Then you have your band, which is two pieces or three pieces. You have that middle cradle part, and then you have the two side parts. Is that right? The band could be all Mm -hmm. one piece. The band can be three pieces. And so there will be um, the cradle or the bridge, and there's a frame, and then there's the back part of the band. 
And it's literally just okay. three scenes and it's done. And yeah. you were saying, Dewan, that if you, once you get good at making bras, you can make one in an hour and a half. That's Is that true. true? Is that, I think that's what you said. You're that's what, that teacher exactly said. what my teacher said. Once you, once you start the process and you get it, you can definitely make a bra pretty quickly, but you just have to, you know, it takes practice like with anything. So there's no reason you couldn't sit down with a couple of hours or so and actually make a bra from beginning to end. And, and I yeah. think that this is what's so surprising to me. And maybe it's because bras are such an important part of women's lives, you know, that we kind of, we, you start with like a training bra. And then, you know, for those of us who have been, you know, trained to wear bras, not everybody has been or chooses to. But for those of us who do, it's kind of like, a, it's, it, it's pretty basic. It's kind of like brushing your teeth. It's kind of like, it's, it's an important part of getting dressed. It's one of those, what they call foundation garments, right? Foundation garments being mm-hmm. bras, panties, um, spanks or girdles, slips, all these things that women wear underneath their clothes. Um, and, you know, in some ways they're really private mm-hmm. garments and, you know, they're helping except you. Except when you made them. <laughs> except when you made them, of course, then you want everybody to see them. Um, and they're also expensive. Yes. I think that, if, you know, if you want a bra, if you want a bra to fit you, um, I was mentioning this on one of my stories a couple of weeks ago, that there's this little shop in Manhattan that I would go to. Um, and I had never spent that much money on bras before. I think, you know, again, to me, you know, but spending between $75 and $100 on a bra is a lot. And, but now that I look at it and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a partial band bra. It's not even a full band. This is a partial band bra. And let me look over and see how this is stitched together. Mine is way prettier, you know? And so, like, these are the things you don't anticipate being able to do in your in your sewing life but it's kind of the point right the reason we sew is because we are like either dissatisfied with or just be want creative. to mm-hmm. do for our mm-hmm. be creative mm-hmm. exactly exactly and the idea of doing that with um a bra is something that lots of folks don't think about so maybe so one thing that i love is that the bra is six pieces maybe seven pieces, depending on how big your cup, but essentially it's a cradle and a band mm-hmm. that wrap around your body and two cups that you sit inside of that kind of cradle mm-hmm. frame that you've made. And that's pretty much the, that's pretty much it. Now, I, I think someone, I think, and I also love that the sewing doesn't have to be, you don't have to be like the world's right. best sewist. You have to be able to, Mm-mm. So a quarter inch seam, which um, for any quilters who might be listening, I know right. we know full well that there's some people who cannot sew a quarter inch seam. If you've ever done a round robin quilt where everyone's supposed to make a block at their house and then you all get together and sew your blocks together, it is always somebody and maybe more than one somebody who like has a different definition of what a quarter inch seam right. is than you do. And so, ha- so for me, the only thing that I would do what I, that I do when I'm sewing my bra, what I want to be sure is that I will take off my regular presser foot and put on my quarter inch mm-hmm. foot for those times mm-hmm. when I have to have a straight seam, like in the side part of the band or whatever. But then I pop that off and put the regular foot on because everything else is going to be zigzag stitch. You know, so it's really like a lot of fun. And so I just wanted to encourage folks just to understand that structurally a bra is six pieces of cutout materials. And like Naomi was saying, if you have a rotary cutter, you know, I tend to print mine on. I know y'all know that I really like printing my patterns on um, freezer Mm -hmm. paper because I can just iron them down to the materials and I can rotary cut it really fast. I don't have to pin anything or put weights down. But even if you're pinning and using scissors, it's not going to take you that long to cut out six pieces. And they're not even that big, you know? So that's something that I really think that people should recognize is that the pieces of material you need to make a bra are mm-hmm. not that many, and it's not beyond your and ability. You can start um, using some of your scraps sometimes just to play around with it. You can use your scraps and, and come up with a bra. You can you can there are some base materials that you have to have, but you can also incorporate your scraps into your cups. 
That's yeah, that's right. That's right. Because when you're making a sample one or you're making a, mm-hmm. a trial one, it doesn't have to be as pretty as as it's going to be. Because I know that and you can also um th- I guess let's turn to the materials that you that people are saying that it's really hard to figure out what you need to make that. Like some folks, you know, trying to understand about mesh and power mesh and bra lining and all of that. And something that I think that we've done um, through all, uh, throughout our hangouts is that we have discovered the beauty yes. of kits. Um, and the kits are pretty amazing because, um, as I was saying earlier, we're working with um, three companies who are going to donate kits for our prizes, which will be announced probably if the episodes, this episode comes out on a Wednesday, we'll probably announce um, the winners on Thursday or Friday. Um um, Bra Builders has really great kits. Emerald Aaron has great kits. And Stitch Love Studios has great kits. And they've all agreed to donate one kit um, as a prize for this pretty exciting bra episode. So why do you think, well, let's talk about what comes in a bra kit. Dewan, do you want to tell us what comes in a typical bra making so, kit? So um, I, I can speak on the kits. I can specifically speak on the kits to bra builders. Now, most kits have at least have the um, the band fabric, which is power mesh. And then there's going to be your straps or your strapping is what it's called to make your straps, your rings, your sliders, your um, under band elastic and your upper band elastic. And then there's your back closure. And so your... Uh, cup material can be a couple of different things, but your kits will have everything you need to make your bra. And most kits have everything except the underwire. So you should be able to order a kit and order a wire and make a bra. And you wouldn't need anything else. Mm-hmm. And one of the great things that I like, I'm sorry, go ahead, Naomi. I got my kit from uh, from mm-hmm. Emerald Aaron. Even though I was making the Marlboro bra, there is they are very similar patterns. So I got my kit from Emerald Aaron, and it included everything, um, including okay, the good. underwire for the bra. And I think that that is a nice way to get over the um, the sourcing. If 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 someone feels like they want to make a bra and they seem to be facing a mountain of obstacles, right? Like, oh my goodness, I've got to make the, oh, I got to get the, the, I don't know how to put the pattern together. And then like, what is Pico elastic? And I need a three A's for this size and five A's for that. And this closure. And do I use this number of hook? And all of that can feel like just a series of steps people might not want to take. But I think I'm hoping that by listening to this, y'all realize that this bra is six pieces and you can get do one stop right. shopping to get everything you need to make one and still have a teeny bit extra if you wanted to use it as a panty panel or something right. like that. So mm-hmm. I really do like kits yeah. for that. And Dewan, you even had a system for when you were um, you were buying them, like you could measure. I think I think it's because you're an accountant, but you had like you had this like my bra strap <laughs> is this measurement distance from the front of my shoulder to the back of my back, and I can get this many straps out of a block. And I was like, you know what? This is way too much math for Lisa. So I'm not gonna never make a bra ever if all this math is involved. That's this is so clearly not for me. So another place that I would source no. materials before um, I was not buying kits, and I would go to So Sassy, So Sassy dot com. Yes, and so yeah. you can mm-hmm. get uh, things to make a bra. For instance, um, I may want to buy um, strapping. I may want to buy five yards of it. So I basically figured out how what's the length I would need for one bra and just divided up, you know, the amount of yards by the length that I needed to figure out how many bras I could make out of it. So it was just a way for me to make sure I kept my little inventory going. Yeah, I'm going to have to just say, I think I'm just going to keep buying kids for the rest of my life because I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be like, oh, I just measured around my body and because of my band length, I have calculated. No, I'm not. I know myself. I am just going to say, you know what? I'll just let other people do that math. And, um, but, I, 
I would say Bra Builders definitely also offers great kits, and um, she has a variety of colors. She dyes them before sending them out, and so when you go on the site, you'll see everything there, and you have a choice of your different laces and whatever color you want, so I would I highly recommend them. Yeah, I do. I do like bra builders. I like that they're. Um, it seems like they're a last they're beginner kit, but they're, they're really good beginner kits. And I love the monthly kits that they do. And I like Emerald mm-hmm, Aaron mm-hmm. kits because you know, of course, Emerald Aaron yeah. designed the Black Beauty bra, and um, and that's something that you know. And I, I, and also they're also really good with um communication because I know when I was trying to pick my underwire yeah. for the Black Beauty bra, and I was talking with um her um, mm-hmm. with Aaron like just via the Etsy chat and I was like I this is what my full bus measures and she's like okay so mm-hmm. you're going to be a bigger size like in maybe this person's pattern but for mine I don't add these numbers like they do so yours is going to be a little smaller and you know mm-hmm. and then she was she's like well here's I'll send you a fitting pack so that's another thing that you know you can decide if you want to if you know that I think that the there are fitting issues when it comes to making a bra so let's let's try transition to that, like some of the fitting challenges and how we can overcome them. And we will talk about those fitting challenges and how to overcome them after the break. You're listening to the Stitch Please podcast, and we are talking about ways to demystify bra making so that you too can make a bra. Please stay tuned. We're going to have some discount codes coming up in the episode from the folks who are generously supporting us. We've got discounts from Bra Builders, Emerald Aaron, as well as Stitch Love Studios, in addition to some of the great prizes that they are offering on the Instagram page. So stay tuned, hang in there with us, and we will continue to help you get your stitch together. The Stitch Please podcast is really growing. We have recently hit 30 thousand downloads. That is a huge deal for a small podcast that is totally independently funded and unsponsored and just a labor of love. Um, I want to thank you for listening to the podcast and ask a favor. If you are listening to this podcast on a medium that allows you to rate it or review it, for example, Apple Podcasts or iTunes, please do so. If you're enjoying the podcast, if you could drop me a five-star rating, if you um, have something to say about the podcast um, and you wanted to include that, a couple sentences in the review box of Apple makes a really big difference in how the podcast is evaluated by Apple, how it becomes more visible. It really is a way to kind of lean into the algorithm that helps to rank podcasts. Um, So if you had time to do that, to drop a little line in the review feature of the podcast, that would be really appreciated and would help us to grow even further and faster. Welcome back to the Stitch Please podcast. We're talking today about bra making and trying to demystify it to convince y'all that yes, you can sew a bra. Um, And also stay tuned. We have discount codes coming up for the folks that I mentioned earlier. And I hope that you have registered for the contest. We've got some giveaways with patterns from Emerald Aaron, um, bra kits from Bra Builders, bra kits from also Emerald Aaron, as well as Stitch Love Studios, who's also giving a pattern, and custom dyed power mesh so that you can have a bra in your skin color from Designs by Tosh. So now we're going to transition, as I said in the previous segment, to talk about some of the fitting issues with a bra. And so um, we're going to have that conversation coming up right now. Here it is. One of the things you want, I believe, is an underwire that's going to fit you and fit your body comfortably. Dewan, I know you know a lot about that. Can you talk about why the underwire is so important for a bra and how we can, as home sewists, figure that out? So, so the underwire is what offers the support in your bra. And you need your underwire to basically be flush against your skin and it should go around your breast root. So if you lift your breast up, there's a, it's basically where your breast tissue attaches to your body or the, your wall, the wall of your chest. 
So if you get an underwire and you push it flush against there and you want to make sure that that it is along the cavity wall, but that you have no breast tissue, like it's not laying on top of the breast, it's outside of the breast. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that Emerald Erin does is she offers these fit kits for underwires. So if you measure yourself and you think you maybe fit a size 42 wire, then she has a kit where you can get the 40, the 42, and the 44 for like $3, I think it is, U.S. dollars. And that's a great way for you to order it, test it, and see which one actually fits you before you sew a bra. Yeah, that's what I did. I, and that's, what, that's, in fact, what I got from her back in back during bra August. I got the fit kit. And I, I can't believe mm-hmm. I forgot I bought the pattern because I knew I had the fit kit and had found the um, the right underwire size. Um, and that was like that was easy. It, it is three dollars. And right. now I know what underwire size works for me. Um, and so the sky is the limit. Really? Yeah, you want to take the underwire and find out which which size on your pattern fits that underwire, because then you're assured to have a band that actually fits mm-hmm. your body, and then you go from there fitting your cups if you need to go larger in your cups. And and I you would adjust. And one of the questions that I know I've heard from folks and they're like, oh, I would love to make a bra, but I just don't think I can find one that's going to fit me. And so right. can, can we talk a bit about like I know I think that I wear I'm not you know, I think that I have moderate size breasts. I don't know. I don't spend a lot of time comparing my breast sizes to other people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like that phase of my life is over. That was well, eighth grade. Um, <laughs> everyone's concerned about that. But I think. I think I make for the Emerald Aaron, I believe I make a 34D, I believe, 34D or double D. And the bra size that I wear, like in Victoria's Secret, I believe, was like a 36C. That's what I normally, I think that's what I was, that's what I was wearing back when I used to buy bras in my past. (laughs) Um, (laughs) um, And I've seen folks who have like fuller cups. Um, than I do or have been able to make a bra successfully. Um, do you, how do you think we can help people think about ways to overcome either that anxiety about sizing or offer some practical solutions that can help with that? So for me, one one thing, one great thing is when we order our bra patterns, they they aren't just one size. You literally get every size in the pattern. So if you're willing to take some measurements, you have a great start as to where to start in the pattern with your size. And if it's off a little bit, you can always make the larger size. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. If you find that uh, the cups are what can be a challenge if you're very busty, and so you may have to grade your cut pattern and just enlarge it. But the great thing about bra making is your cups are generally two or three pattern pieces. And so you can, um, you can adjust it. So I have a book, it's a digital book that I bought and um, it is called how to grade a bra and brief. It's by Lori Van Johnson, J O N S S O N. And I'm sure Lisa will um, tag it in the show notes. And so for those of you who may, maybe your cup may not be in the size range and the pattern, you can always grade it up and it'll still fit into the bra band of the pattern that you have. And that's a really great feeling, right? You know, it's like, and, and it helps you feel like, okay, I can get this around. I can get it to close. I can add right. the straps. And now I, I just need to adjust the cups. And there's so many different types of bra cups that, I, right. and, that I've been able to see, like the, the balconette. Mm-hmm. That's one I'm really interested in, which is like a mm-hmm. short demi cup. I think the Emerald Aaron bra, is it, is it a demi cup or it's some type of, it's not like the same full coverage cup 
um, well, I, I don't know all the different bra style cups. I just know about the balconette and the demi, and it was something else, I guess a full. But there's, there's ways that you can kind of decide or choose certain cups that will also help with that. So I'm excited. I've not tried that book that you described, Juan, but I will indeed put it in the show notes because I totally want to, okay. to check it out. Um, for the sewing of the, there's some of the magic that happens for me with bra making is to, when it goes from looking like just a, a pile of tiny rags to, <laughs> to being like an actual, an actual bra that a person could put on. And there's so many little tweaks and things that you can do, um, with okay. the bra pattern. So like, I think the first one I did, I tend to prefer a two hook bra band to close the bra in the back. Um, uh, but some people prefer three and I believe the emerald Aaron might come with a two but you can make your so basically you if you want to cut the back band the back closures of your bra if you want to make that bigger you can just cut it a little bit taller and you can make it bigger to fit in and put the hooks and eyes in the back but if you also want it to be a little shorter you can just cut it a little more narrow and just right. put the hooks and eyes on that way um you know what? One of the things that I thought was very intimidating about bra making, it was making the straps. I'm telling you, I, I harassed Dewan to no end um, about this last year, Naomi. Seriously, she, this woman was like, I'm sure Dewan was thinking, I don't know who gave that bitch a PhD because she is a moron. <laughs> because I was like, Dewan, I... You know what, Dwan? I just saw this place and they sell a bunch of straps. And I'm just gonna buy ten straps. And she was like, Lisa, they're not gonna match what you're making. It's yeah. not hard to make a bra strap. I'm like, well, Dwan, it's not hard for you. I said, Lisa, when you get ready to make it, just call me. I'll walk you through it. It literally takes five minutes. And she was like, Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I did not believe her in any way. I was like, yeah, it takes you five minutes because you are an accountant and you keep an inventory of all your bra materials. <laughs> but for a race, the, it is the, the most simple process in making the bra. <laughs> the, making the strap wasn't the problem that I was having when I had to go yeah. to YouTube. The problem that I was having was I don't, lacy bras are itchy to me, so I didn't get a bra that was, um, that had, I didn't get a kit that had lace. Mm -hmm. I got a kit, um, that was all duoplex, which presents another problem for me, but that's a whole right. other issue. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to figure out what, now how do I get a clean finish? Because mm -hmm. if, if I'm going to, if I'm going to make the bra, it's going to be pretty on the outside and the inside. And so I was sitting right. at the computer at YouTube and sh um, shout out to Liz Sos um, mm -hmm. on YouTube because her tutorials are in depth Excellent. and easy to understand mm -hmm. and like in plain, mm -hmm. plain language. She's not using all of this jargon and mm -hmm. making it even more intimidating than it seems. Um, I literally watched the same step in her um her bra sew along tutorial like 14 times and then was like <laughs> ah light bulb i got it and i know what to do it was just making sure that when i attached my upper cup to the lower cup that i was going to get that clean seam finish that the rest of the um the rest of the group was getting because they were using the lace and once I got that, I was off. Like, I was walking around. Like, I was standing in my mirror with my three-part cup sewn together. And I was holding it up to my breast like, is like, oh, shit. I got one cup. I'm standing, like, literally standing in the mirror. No underwire, no band or anything. I'm like, I got a cup that's going to cover my titty. <laughs> uh, and, like, it Look was, out, world. It was a good time. But, like, watch out, world, because don't let me find a bedazzler on, on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> my principal is going to say, um, Naomi, you may not 
in fact, <laughs> teach second graders <laughs> in, in a bra. bra. And I'm going to be like, but why not? <laughs> Bras are part of life. And I made this one, didn't I tell you? And I made it. Like, <laughs> How many times I got to tell you I made it. Everybody gets to see it. And I think that this, I love this kind of reminder, and I'll be sure to link to um, to Liz So and Liz So's in the show notes, um, is that there are parts of the bra that are tricky. It's just kind of, it's, it's, it's similar to basically when you're learning to do basic sewing, you know, learning when to sew something right sides together versus, you know, mm-hmm. sewing a facing. And I think that one of the things for me that we, I was like, I don't know, I, I couldn't wrap my head around. I'm like, well, so why do I need this three ace elastic around this uh, this upper elastic? And why do I need the, the wider elastic for the bottom? And then once I figured that out, I was like, well, once you do it. Yes. And so, like, essentially what we're talking about here, y'all, is the Pico elastic that you get is this really beautiful decorative elastic one end of it is um is straight and the other is scalloped and when you this was a part that i kept messing up until i stopped messing it up right i you you make sure that the pico the pico scallops are pointing inward on the right side of your bra and you stitch it down closest to the straight edge then it basically all you're doing in sewing terms, like apparel sewing, is making a facing. You're using the elastic as a facing, and so mm-hmm. you stitch it, you flip it down, and what flip you'll try, you flip it mm-hmm. inside. And what you've done is you've covered any raw edge that you have cut for your bra, and you've made a decorative edge that's also going to be comfortable against your skin when you put it on. And yeah. it's really just, it's just a facing. And I'm like, oh, wait, why am I freaking out? It's just a facing, you know? Yeah. And so I was like, wait a minute, I know how to make facings. I'm, I can make facings. That's okay. I can do that. <laughs> and right. so, yeah. And so that has been pretty great. That has been really, really great. That And, and that yeah. part I find really satisfying. The That's only a good other way to thing, associate it too. Yeah. The <laughs> only other thing is with working with elastic, which is the same thing always when um when working with elastic, is to make sure you're not stretching it in an in- inappropriate spot so you don't get that right. wavy um kind mm-hmm. of lettucey edge. But like it's so so easy and it's so mm-hmm. it is I cannot overstate how satisfying making bra making this bra is that um that first bra was i like i'm hooked i'm hooked mm-hmm. i am not mm-hmm. like I, I will maybe buy a specialty bra if there is some occasion where i need to wear a a bra that has a deep v basically down to my belly button i don't know what occasion that would be but that's Essentially, the um, e- next year's frocktail. Next year's frocktail. I think you would need that for next year's frocktails. Next year's frocktails. I'm gonna be wearing like leggings and a t-shirt, and I'm definitely gonna drink <laughs> at frocktails next year because I didn't drink at frocktails this year because I was overwhelmed and basically crying the whole time. But next year, I know I'm just wearing leggings and flip flops and drinking. Maybe a bra. And Maybe a bra you made. I yeah. might actually wear just underwear, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's let's transition really quickly to talk about bralettes. And I know y'all know that my we will continue our conversation about the bralettes in just a few minutes. I wanted to share the discount codes for the folks who are collaborating with us today. We have discount codes that have been generously given to us by Stitch Love Studio, by Bra Builders, and Emerald Aaron. So tomorrow or Friday, I think, we're going to have the drawing for the free bra patterns and bra kits, as well as the power net. Um, power mesh from designs by Tosh. But even if you are not a winner of those particular prizes, you are winning by listening to the Stitch Please podcast because um, they have given us discount codes for their other products. So please check them out. And the discount code, y'all, is Stitch Please. So go ahead, check out those folks. Their links to their um, websites are in the show notes. And using the Stitch Please discount code will help you get your stitch together to get started making some bras and bralettes of your own. 
So now we're going to come back to the program and we're going to talk about bralettes. Here it is. <laughs> let's let's transition really quickly to talk about bralettes. And I know y'all know that my running joke about bralettes is that it's bra let me down, <laughs> bra let your titties down. Like I have yet to find previously to this one I recently made a bralette that actually held up my breast. Like I have always thought that bralettes were like, like, why do I even, like, if I'm, if I'm not going to wear a bra, let me just not wear a bra. But I know Naomi, you said that you like soft bras. Can you talk a little bit more about what a soft bra does for you rather than something more structured? So I, I like soft bras only because I don't like for my breasts to be at my waistline. Um, <laughs> um, I, I don't own, however, many, um, many soft bras that fit well. Um, for a period of time, I used to work at a really, um, a popular high end, um, athletic wear store. And so as a, as a, you know, as a function of my employment, I had to wear, the products. And so I have several of the, like the mid medium impact, um, soft bras from them. And the, I like the, the thickness of the fabric for them. And I like the thickness of the band, but they don't like, they, I wouldn't say they are, they fit well. They just Mm -hmm. keep my, keep my breasts from literally being at my waist. Um, when I'm lounging around the house, if I were going to actually be a person who ran, this would not be inappropriate. Like, I'm wearing one now because it's, you know, uh, another day in um, stay-at-home orders. Um, But I'm wearing it now, and it's literally just to keep them so that I don't have the weight of my breasts just hanging because that's not comfortable for me. Um, But it's because it's the the thickness of the fabric and the band that's keeping me like lifted. There's no separation. There Mm -hmm. is no like no impact control. So if I were going to go for a run, I would need to wear something different um, to like do any real physical activity. Um, And so I'm looking forward to making um, a bralette. I have a couple of bralette patterns, one from, um, one from Emerald Aaron and I have one from Madeline and I have one from, um, Sophie Hines that I'm looking forward to trying because I like, I'm ambitious. I keep buying the, the, the patterns to make these things. And then I'm like, yeah, nothing I make is going to be any better than, you know, the things that I have, that I have left over from, when I worked at that store, so it's fine. I won't worry about it. I supported a small business mm-hmm. buying the patterns, and that's good enough. Oh, honey, I made this bra now. I'm making all the bralettes. They're gonna be great because they actually fit my body. I'm so excited. Mm-hmm. About it. And and Dewan, you, would, what's your what are your thoughts would, on bralettes? I would say anybody who is nervous about making a bra but want to kind of just. Uh, slowly get into it that they would make a bralette Mm -hmm. and that way they don't have to um, tackle the underwire portion but there's no real difference from making um, an underwire bra and making a bralette except for the underwire right that's right so I would say it ain't that hard it's not it's not hard hard. but some people some people who are nervous if they're like they don't want to tackle it if they just make a bralette, then they will they will make the bra with the underwire because it's not difficult. And that is actually so that's a perfect. What, that's what my suggestion would be. And that's a perfect transition because I am a bralette skeptic. And it was not until um, one of the sponsors for our giveaway, um, Stitch Love Studios, told me about... They have two bralette patterns. I bought a kit from them because I really like red. And so um, I bought the kit and I thought I was going to make my Emerald Aaron with their kit. But the, but the, um, the findings and stuff were a little too small. And it turns out that the kit that I bought was actually better for a bralette. And so I was like, oh, okay. But this one, they have two. They have one called the Lily, which has a really pre- pretty sheer front. And then they have one um, called the Daisy. I guess maybe all their bras made after the natural flowers. I'm not sure. But they have... The 
one that I made, I'm telling you, y'all, the Daisy bralette from Stitch Love Studios has totally converted me to the possibilities of bralettes. And I talked with the designer. Um, we chatted on a on a Zoom chat earlier, and she was like, "Okay, I understand your your thing about bralettes. And here's the deal: if you want a bralette to be more supportive, it's going to be a trade off. You have to either add a closure." and or use stronger mesh as support. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I I wanted to just try a pull over the head because I am on a little a little bit on the lazy side. I did not want to add a closure <laughs> if I did not have to. Um, and so I, I said, let me just go ahead and try it. So I tried the bralette first in an extra large, and then I went down a size because that made it feel a bit more snug. And y'all seen it. I mean, I can not believe it is real. I mean, I could actually put this on and put a t-shirt on or something else like that. And it would, it would actually work. I keep looking down at them going, oh my gosh. Why are they not on the floor? Um, because this, I can't believe it. It's, so that's been pretty exciting. So I have been recommending the Daisy, um, the Daisy bralette. And again, they're going to be giving us um, a pattern as well as a kit. So if you are a winner, you can try the Daisy bralette if you wanted to get started or any of the other things they have on their website. Um, I want to talk a little bit about finding fabrics that are matching the skin colors of black women. And that gives us a chance to kind of turn to um, um, Natasha Clute and Designs by Tosh. She's going to be giving a swatch kit and a half a yard of power mesh in that color. So say you win a swatch kit, you can remember she sent us these samples, um, y'all for the stitch please retreat back in October of 2019. And we had quite a fun time matching all those swatches to us. Remember that? Like she, all the, the swatches were named after foods. And I think when I talked to her the other day, she said she has, she's up to 150 colors now. Of skin color. Wow. 150. Um, so that's amazing. I I cannot wait. And so the bra the bralette that I made that had that I had the most success with, which was the size large in the daisy, I made the outside cups in one of her fabrics. And it just looks so nice. It like actually matches my body. And that's something that a lot of black women don't have the experience of in lots of things like, you know, going to get a dress right. off the rack that has a mesh middle and that mesh middle is the flesh colored crayon color. And it's like, well, that's going right. to look ridiculous. Um, or, and so this is something I'm really excited about, about being able to get power mesh in my skin color. So that, and that's, that's one of the reasons that that bralette has been so exciting for me. It's like, oh my gosh, I can wear yeah. this and it like blends so well. So that's been really great. I, I think every black woman would love to have uh, their own flesh tone color fabric to be able to do what they want with it. You know, that's amazing. And I did make two pair of panties out of some of that same mm-hmm. mesh. And so that's another, I'm like, oh my gosh, I've never had... A pair of underwear. They are beautiful. <laughs> it turned out so nice. They are beautiful. Yeah. I am yeah. super, super yeah. excited about this. So um, yeah. we're getting close to the, the end of our time, but I wanted to see, do you all have anything? If someone has been listening to the episode and wants to have a sense of a takeaway, what would, what advice would you give to someone Um, who, for example, Naomi is in your position, who has never sewn a bra before, but who has excellent sewing skills. Um, What kind of advice would you give for them to kind of get over their hesitation? I would tell somebody um, who's never sewed a bra, but who is ready to give it a try to buy a pattern and buy a kit from Emerald Aaron or Bra Builders or somebody who sells a kit with everything that you need and just sew. It's so easy. It's so simple. It's so quick and it's so inexpensive. Buying a kit is going to be the same cost as a bra that you would get from Target or Victoria's Secret or anywhere else. If you if you have been regularly buying bras at Victoria's Secret or at Target or, you know, at Macy's, just buy a kit, buy 
pattern and make the bra. Like the worst thing that you have is a bra that doesn't fit you perfectly. And that's the same thing that happens mm -hmm. at um when you get a bra from from one of those stores. The store. Mm -hmm. It, mm -hmm. it really is just that simple. Mm -hmm. Dewan, how about you? And I would say it is one of, I would say it's one of the most satisfying sewing um, that you can do. Yeah. I, so I, w I would say that. I would also say YouTube is out there. There's so many great videos on it. And don't let it just, just try it. I guess I would want to say just try it. I love it. Yeah. And we are, I'm telling you, I feel the exact same way. I still marvel that I have bras hanging up in my laundry room right now that are bras that I have actually made. Um, I do wish I could show everybody my bra. I feel like if, when I start to see people again, I'll, they'll be like, hi, how are you? I'm like, well, you know, I made a bra, so it can't be that bad. Let me show you. You know, <laughs> people will be like, nah, ma'am, this is church. Can you please put your shirt down? Um, you know, I'm like, I just wanted to show the Lord that I had on a bra that I made. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, thank y'all so much. So can you, oh, can you tell us where people can find you on the socials? Um, and I'll include that in the show, show notes. Dewan, where can people find you on um, social media, like Instagram, if that's where you keep most of your sewing? So my Instagram handle is so DD is S as in Sam, E as in, Everybody, W as in Walter, D as in David, D as in David, 1104. So DD1104. Thank you. And how about you, Naomi? Where can people find you on the socials? And I'm Naomi P. Johnson on Instagram. And that links to a Facebook page where I'm not at all active. But it's N-A-O-M-I, P like Paul, J-O-H-N-S-O-N. Um, on Instagram. Well, I'm going to be sure to put that in the show notes. And y'all are just wonderful. I'm telling y'all, you all need to get y'all some friends who can be a blessing to your life like these women have been to mine. Um, and so I'm so grateful to them to just come on the podcast and, and talk about bra making. And I am anticipating that this will not be the last time we're talking about lingerie because if you think making bras <laughs> is easy, which I believe it is, wait until you make a pair of panties um that that you can make from actual scraps of garments so i'm pretty sure that we will in the future have an episode on making panties and then once you get your matching bras and panties set you too will be um above above talking to the regular mortals because you make your own lingerie <laughs> all right y'all you'll be unstoppable, unstoppable. exactly That's all right thanks y'all bye-bye <laughs> Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of the Stitch Please podcast, the official podcast of Black Women Stitch, the sewing group where Black Lives Matter. There are a variety of ways that you can support the program, and you're doing it right now. By listening to the pro by listening to the podcast, it does help us grow. Another way to do that is to rate the podcast, review it, subscribe to it. All of these things are ways that you can support the podcast without having to spend any money at all. If you would like to spend some money to support us, there are ways to do that as well. You can make direct donations to our Patreon site for monthly contributions, as well as one-time contributions to PayPal, Cash App, or Venmo. And finally, we have another cute, very adorable way for you to support the Black Women's Stitch Project. It's a pin, a P-I-N enamel lapel pin that's very cute. It's about two inches wide and one and a half inch tall, and it's of the Black Women's Stitch logo. And that is $15 with free shipping to the U.S. And so if you drop $15 in the a PayPal, Venmo, or Cash App accounts, and then send me your email, no, not email, if you send me your mailing address to my email either at blackwomenstitch at gmail.com or you send me a direct message on the Black Women Stitch Instagram page we will put the pin in the mail to you um, again free shipping $15 for the pin and all of this goes to support the Black Women Stitch Project 
Thank you again for joining us this week. Come back next week and we will help you get your stitch together.